Today we're going to talk about how to uh, develop a wild and untamed landscape completely out of control, much like this one. lessening your own work because you don't have to mow it or weed it. It encourages a wide range of healthy variety in your ecosystem. Various birds, various amphibians, uh, various mammals. I've seen a number of birds this year. Orchard orioles, painted buntings, indigo buntings, bluebirds, cardinals, all, all kinds of, of things. Everything from voles to rabbit. There's evidence of fox and coyotes. And what that means is, uh, not only do I get to see and record a, a number of wildlife sightings, and not only does Brian get to try his hand at nature photography, which is one of his hobbies, uh, but also the pests that I have are taken care of by a thriving ecological system. This is another section of our property that we let run wild. I'm actually standing on uh, what is a pipeline that crosses, unfortunately, on our property and we can't do anything with that section, with that area of land. And what's behind me is the boundary between our property and the neighbor's empty lot. And there's actually a bit of a dip there or a, or a trench. So it's a nice water runoff and it's hard to mow. So it, we generally just let it grow. And earlier in the season, this was a wild blackberry bush and we got some blackberries off it for a while before the local wildlife found it and started eating it before we got to it. Behind me right now is actually a passion flower, which are really coming into season, and they are host plants for the Gulf fritillary butterflies, which are beautiful. And we had a number of them last year, so I'm hoping that we get some this year as well. We've also recently started to see a cat wandering around. We're not sure where it came from, uh, but hopefully it's helping with the rodents a little bit because we are seeing a lot of them. But that brings up another point because one very good reason to not do this is because you don't want to have that thriving variety of animals in your property, especially if you are in the suburbs or you just have a, a small plot of land and you're not looking to attract coyotes near your cats or your small dogs or what have you. And obviously a small patch of wild area is not going to bring coyotes to steal your... Hey buddy. <laughs> to steal your chihuahua. I'm not really worried about these guys. So if you're just doing the one small patch of wild garden area, you may get some more birds. Mostly it'll be an area of beauty for your yard, uh, an area of exploration. It's after 7 now, so the traffic is never going to stop. It's almost 7.30. Something that's this wild, we do have to kind of keep an eye on the animals and make sure that it's not getting out of hand. If we start finding uh, all kinds of bugs and rodents in our house, that'll be a bit of an issue, right? And I will say, during mosquito season, we get mosquito treatments once a month because mosquitoes are so bad here. They're bad for the dogs, they're bad for us. But we have a number of birds and dragonflies that help us control them. I mean, the sprays alone aren't enough. They don't completely eliminate the problem. But they do mitigate it a little bit. We also have a bug light that helps to cut down on the number of moths and mosquitoes. But it wouldn't be enough if we didn't have the variety here. In the spring, the number of dragonflies in our backyard is astonishing. I could just stare at them for hours, and I have. And the dragonflies seem to bring in the Mississippi kites as well. We've been watching them hunt the dragonflies out our back window for the past few days, and they are stunning. So again, this is why I recommend a 
thriving, healthy, ecological system that has a lot of variety in it. Let's talk about how to do that. What I have behind me is an enormous pumpkin plant that sprouted in my compost. I have not grown pumpkins in this location before, but last year Brian bought some pumpkins. The intention was to make some pumpkin pie out of those pumpkins, but that time of year we didn't get around to it and the pumpkin rotted. So we threw it in the compost and now we have this gorgeous pumpkin plant. It's got maybe a dozen fully grown pumpkins on it at this point in the year, which is fantastic, and it just keeps growing. To get started with a little natural wild landscaping, you just need to pick an area and not mow it, not trim it, not weed it for a while and see what happens. In a lot of areas of the country, June might be a great time to do that. There were on a number of coneflowers and garden coreopsis in here, but they're kind of dying off. When the summer gets really hot in Louisiana, a lot of weeds actually take a back seat. A lot of flowering plants kind of take a back seat. It's just too hot for them. As things are kind of stepping back and holding off here, in some places of the country, they are really just ramping up. So all you'll want to do is pick an area and you can make it pretty if you want, um, border it with some flagstones and then just let it go and see what happens. And sometimes nothing happens, or at least nothing that interests you. But spring and fall are probably the best time. Some of the best wildflowers uh, seem to grow during that time in my experience. And if what comes in isn't really interesting to you, there are always seed mixes of wildflowers. Let's say that you let an area of your yard grow in, grow wild wild and you're just not happy with the results. Don't give up. First of all, maybe try a different season. Maybe, you know, go ahead and, and mow it down if it's bothering you and then try it again in another couple of months. But you can also plant some wildflowers there. One option is to do some research. What is uh, native? What grows natively? Maybe you can find some seeds for that and scatter it because those will be the best suited to just growing and taking care of themselves. You can also just find, you know, pollinator wildflower mixes. These are some that I just got the other day and you know this one is hummingbird and butterfly. I did spread these but I kind of spread it in an area that was already overgrown so they didn't really come in. It is an ongoing learning process. Part of what I love about those areas in your yard is the fact that you get to play with it and experiment and see the cycles of nature. So after all that, we did end up mowing one of the big wild sections of our yard that we were letting just grow free. The wildflowers that had been growing there, they went to seed, they were done, and it was just kind of looking like a mess. So we decided to mow it, give it a chance to start over, give anything that might want to come in an opportunity. But now I'm going to spread some wildflower seeds. We're expecting some rain, we heard some thunder. I'm gonna spread some wildflower seeds and hope for the best. <sighs> Hopefully I can get this done before the rain starts. I can still hear the thunder. Um, even if the sun comes back out, the patch I am spreading seed in is in the shade, fortunately. So let's hope for the best.
disclaimer, you are supposed to, you know, clear an area and rake the seeds in to make sure that they have good soil contact and that they don't blow away or get eaten or wa get washed away. I'm taking the easy route and hopefully that works out for me. Thank you for watching. Leave me questions in the comments below and make sure you like and subscribe. Hopefully there is enough crap there that we can get something out of it.